Oh, wait, Audi, go ahead. You have the honors. Oh, there you go. Audi, finally, finally in the game. Okay, so let's talk. Robert, what do we, go ahead. What were we talking about? We're talking about social media and our guest. Oh, that's exactly right. The importance of having a landing page. Tell me, why don't you want to drive people just straight to your website? You have to warm them up first, but what else? What else? If you drive them straight to your website, you don't capture their information. And if you don't capture their information, how are you going to, how are you going to contact them? How are you going to push messages. If they came to your website, they're sniffing around, right? But if you have a landing page, if you have a landing page and you offer them something and that, that something is called a lead magnet. Don't forget that. A lead magnet. A lead magnet is something you're going to offer them maybe for free or some kind of discount, right? some kind of discount or something for free. And I want to make sure that you understand that with the landing page, we are trying to push people to where? Bye. Real close. Huh? Into our CRM system. We need to capture their data, right? We need to capture their info. And now you're starting to build a critical mass of customers that you can begin pushing messages to that will eventually become hopefully a sale where we get some kind of call to action where maybe maybe they are maybe they're following you on social media, right? and they have gone to your landing page and they have said, yeah, you know, I feel like, I feel like this, is, this is the type of corporate culture that I want to be associated with. They sell a high quality service or product and yet it's not, they're not, they're not trying to hammer me every day on, on social media, right, with a sale. They're just, they're just cool, right? You get them into your CRM system, and the next thing you know, you can start sending them messages. They buy something, bam, you put it in. It uploads automatically in most cases. You know exactly what it is they bought, when they bought it. You can send them thank you notes. You can send them things that will lead to and, I, I'm, I'm, I, and the reason why this is important is because we are now talking about the lifetime value of a customer. And we've spoken about this a little bit. Tell me about the lifetime value of a customer as it relates to, say, Cadillac. You remember Cadillac? Did we talk about it? Cadillac has, Cadillac has calculated that if you buy a Cadillac, you're going to spend $350,000, $350,000 over your lifetime on Cadillac goods and services. Not just more Cadillacs, but Cadillac driving gloves, Cadillac hats, Cadillac leather jackets, Cadillac keychains, you name it. And let me tell you something. If you are able, if you are able to keep them as a customer, you don't have to spend as much money advertising, right? If you're able to use the CRM system, which is basically going to cost you, let's just say, let's just say it costs you 50 bucks a month or 60 bucks a month, but you're able to keep them as a lifetime customer all you're doing is pushing out messages. I don't care what size business you have, but I can tell you that the smaller you are, the more important CRM is. You cannot, you're going to have customers that come back, 
But if you don't have a CRM system, you're leaving money on the table. Let me tell you something. There's nothing worse to me than leaving money on the table. Nothing. You might as well have stolen money out of my pocket. If I leave money on the table, that's the same as somebody of, of somebody just letting me, that's the same as me just throwing money in the street and people taking it. That's my fault. You have to have a CRM system because this is where the real value, the value isn't in buying with Cadillac. It's not buying one car. That's peanuts. Think of this. How much does a Cadillac cost? I don't know, 50, 60 grand? I don't know, maybe it's more, 70 grand? I don't know, but, but the average Cadillac customer will spend 350 grand. How many cars is that? How many, how, how much, how much uh, collateral are they buying in terms of hats and jackets and keychains? That's a lot of money. And here's the other thing. So it's not just about the lifetime value of a customer. It's about keeping them from going to Lexus, keeping them from going to your other customers. So even though, even though they may have been a customer of yours for, let's say, a decade, let's say they bought two things from you. Let's say they bought two cars from you. Let's say your Cadillac over a decade. And you didn't have them in your CRM system, but they really liked Cadillac. They were loyal to Cadillac, but you were never reaching out or never touching them. You're leaving the door open for a competitor. You're leaving a door open for Lexus or for whoever they compete with. I don't know who Cadillac, Mercedes, Lexus, BMW, Audi, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of competitors out there. Do you think you can afford to leave the door open? And how much does it cost for you to push some messages to them? Pennies to capture thousands, if not tens. Of, so tell me, is 60 bucks a month worth it? It pays for itself in spades. It pays for itself in exponentially. Exponentially. So when we talk about CRM, it's not just about the lifetime value. It's about the competition, too. It's about the competition. It's a war. I mean, every day, marketing is a war. And if you capture somebody as a, as a customer in your CRM system, you're starting to win. You're starting to win because we're talking about also market share, right? Market share. And market share is also known, my friends, as your footprint. Your footprint is starting to expand. Your footprint is starting to expand. You have to have a landing page. You have to have a CRM system. And what we're, we're really talking about is not just pushing messages, but keeping the customer. We're talking about market share. We're talking about keeping them from buying other people's products. We're talking about blue ocean. We're talking about the blue ocean. We, hey, I'm going to tell you, if you're not using a CRM system, they're seeing ads every day from the red ocean, aren't they? Every single day. And if you're not in contact with your customers, if you haven't said thank you to your customers for, for, buying your product or your service, at some point, they're going to say, you know what, it's just more convenient if I, if I go to Sears or if I, if I start buying my, my goods at the major retailer. Let's say it's a Dillard's or a Macy's or something. Maybe it's, maybe it's better if I just go to Costco and then you lose them. And then what does it take to replace them? 
Let's look at that. Do you know why companies were, you know, we're not doing this. So funny. We are now entering with cellular data plans a whole new market, aren't we? No longer are you going to be getting two-year contracts, are you? What is it that's coming out now? What is it that, that they're doing? Leasing. iPhones for life. And what were you saying? Leasing the phone, and you just pay every month. And you don't get the discount so much anymore. Right? We're entering a whole new, a whole new ball game. And it's part of this subscription model that everybody's going crazy about. But you end up with a, t a cell phone provider that offers you a two-year plan and the reason why is because they don't make any money off you for at least a year they don't make any money off you for at least a year that's why they require at least a two-year plan you've got to be thinking about you've got to be thinking about how you're going to create your global enterprise and this is the foundation. This is the process. Most people think we need to get started on the website first. Maybe. But you better be getting that landing page up before that website's done. You don't want people to go to the website before the landing page is completed. You better make sure your CRM system is done before your website and your landing page. You better make sure that you have messages that you can start disseminating on social media. You better have a social media presence now. I was meeting with some students earlier today and they've got their own clothing company and they're starting to get some traction. Starting to get some traction. But I asked them how their social media was coming along and they didn't have, they didn't have yet a daily or weekly, it was kind of like, well, when, it was this, when we get around to it. No, that's not, that's not customer acquisition. You have to do it daily. You have to have weekly and monthly, a monthly itinerary that you are implementing every single day. One of them said, well, I'm doing the Facebook. And the other said, well, I, I'm going to do Instagram. And the other was, well, no, wait, I'll do the Instagram because I'm do, already doing fa Facebook. They had no idea who was doing what. So I said, by next Tuesday, I want to know, I want to know who's doing what, and I want to see a daily, weekly, monthly plan. This is how you compete globally. This is how you compete domestically. This is how you create your own blue ocean. I don't care what size business. What else did we talk about? What else did we talk about? Someone, Bueller, anyone, Bueller. We talked about sales, pipeline. sales pipeline, Spencer. Tell me about that. Uh, okay, say it again. They are four categories. Four categories. New opportunities, contacting, and closing. And this is part of the process that Brent Capello talked to us about that's within the CRM system. That's within the CRM system. I've told you that you need to be spending what percentage of your time on guerrilla marketing? What percentage? 80 plus percent of your time needs to be every day on sales. That's CRM, that's guerrilla marketing, that's customer engagement. Excellent, Spencer. Excellent. Spencer and I went to see a startup looking for funds 
last week. What did you learn about, about uh, fundraising and, and how, how things are going? I mean, how things work within the, the startup world, Spencer? It was cool, wasn't it? It was, but then, even though I don't understand like all of the parts that you guys are talking about, but I was assuming that it was really interesting. It, it was cool. It was cool. So we went and looked at a startup last week, and they were looking for, I think it was a million? A million. Yeah, they were looking for a million, and, and uh, Spencer tagged along. And they gave me their presentation. And something that I want you to be aware of, and I thought that I would bring this up because Spencer and I went there, and I said to them, okay, what's this, what's this first dot? You guys tell me. What's this first dot? Did we talk about the chronology? Your aha moment, right? And then what's after this? Research. Okay. We'll say R&D. What's after this? Your team, excellent. You have to have a competent team. And Spencer, they had been they had been building a pretty competent team. Mm -hmm. They had a chief technology officer. They had a chief marketing officer. They had people underneath the chief marketing officer. What else is what what what's next? No, it's not the beta. Vision which is also your dream, and then we go to your MVP, and now beta, right? And now you're beta. And I told them, because they were right about here, and I told them, you need to do a beta. You need to do a beta with experts, with the cult. And I said, I usually invest, I don't know if you heard that me say that, Spencer, but I said, I usually invest post-beta. I'm not going to give them any money until I see that they have proven the concept. They've got to go through the proof of concept. They have a really whiz-bang idea. And they've been building the MVP. And they have the programming technology in the back end to successfully complete it. Everything looks great. Except for one thing. It needs to be tested. It needs to be tested. They were looking for a million dollars. It's a startup. And let me tell you something. If their beta works... If their beta is proven, because it's a very scalable, very scalable technology, if their beta is proven, they'll get the million dollars pretty quickly. They'll probably have to turn money down. The problem is this. I don't know that, I don't know that they're going to be doing the beta with experts. I don't know that they're going to be doing the beta with their customer. They have the sense, they have kind of this global sense about them that I like, but the issue is this. The issue is they think everyone is their customer. And they think that everyone, everyone will want their application. And I don't know that that's the case. I'm not saying it isn't either. My problem is, is that even if they come up with the beta, I got to see the data. I got to see who it is. I got to make sure that this is with some real serious experts, that they want to implement this technology on their phones. They want to download this app. It's a very clever app. I don't have their permission to talk about it now, but we'll talk about it at the next meeting because they'll have some data for me. But this process, this process right in here, when they're doing their beta and their MVP, 
This is where you need to start getting and start building your CRM system. This is where you need to start building your landing page, your website. So put this down in your illustrations that here is where you need to be, you need to be. Because if the beta works, get this, if the beta works, and it's been done with experts, now, now you can push that success through to as many, as many people on social media as possible, and then they will repeat it. The expert, other experts will start looking at this and saying, wow, you know, Robert's an expert in this, and he's, and they're saying that he tried this, I'm going to take a look. I'm going to test this out myself. And that's how things, I don't want to say become viral because it's viral to me is something that bam, everybody's all of a sudden, everybody's watching this one video on, you know, a bear chasing a guy or something, right? Um, but, but this is how it's built. This is how it's built. And get, get this. Get this, you don't have to have an education in computer programming. This is all stuff that you can do on yourself, by yourself. It used to be, I'm not kidding, 10 years ago, I don't know if you remember this, 10 years ago, if you wanted a website built, you had to pay somebody. I think everybody here could build a website. Actually, I know every person in this class can build their own website, and I'm willing to bet that most of you already have had some experience. And your product or service doesn't have to be high tech. It doesn't have to be high tech. Not at all. But guess what? At some point, in, in, with, with where we're at now in our, I guess, society, Technology is a strategy. It is now something that you need to be thinking about. Whereas before, technology was, well, yeah, we, we need a website. Yeah, we, we, uh, we, need to, uh, we need to get some programmers and maybe do some, some other stuff on the back end, too. Now, if you're not doing this, you're moving backwards. The world's moving fast enough that if, and this is the interesting thing about business. This is the interesting thing about business. And I don't want you to forget this. With business, it's very, very unforgiving. If you're not moving forward, you're actually moving backwards. If you're not moving forward with business, you have to play catch up because you are going backwards. That's, that's a fact, which is why you need to be spending every single day, 80% of your time on sales, which also means fulfilling that order, fulfilling those sales. How many of you have some experience with, with, um, CRM or some success with CRM. Does anybody have any experience with CRM? Ben, Jude, DJ. What's the name again? Uh, Richard. Richardo. <laughs> Richard, you tell us first. Uh, well, I used to tell my dad <coughs> when he was getting these things. He used to do like uh, mailing, uh, mailing lists and stuff like that. I used to run it. I didn't know anything about it. So. Excellent. How did it work out? Not so well. <laughs> Not so well. Why? Okay, all right. Well, at least you have some. Ben? Well, uh, I mean, in particular, the summer we used that. I mean, we used CRM software to just keep track of leads and to reach out to prospective customers and whatnot. And it, was, it was an interesting experience. Like, the CRM software we had, I mean, that went briefly last week. It wasn't even the best, but it was, it was, it was still interesting to see how it kind of interfaced together. And mm -hmm. 
Yeah, very cool. Was it in-house? Yeah. No, it was some third-party software, but I think it was free. Like, they were, I mean, they were going to transition to, like, Salesforce or something at the end of the year, but I think it's down the road. <laughs> that was the next process, so. God, interesting to me how companies don't pull the trigger yeah. on, I, I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It just does not make any sense to me. Well, once you capture their data, once you capture their information, you then start engaging with them with messages. You start letting them know what it is that's going on. You can let them know that you're even a startup. You know, when people, you know, I don't subscribe to that fake it till you make it at all. I think that you be honest with people. I think that if you let people know that you're a startup or you're a small business, they'll appreciate that. And they'll say, yeah, you know, Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll buy it. I'll be happy to. And they'll pay, oftentimes, they're willing to pay a little bit more just because it's like, wow, you know, my kid could be part of a startup soon. You know, or my kid probably is part of a startup, right? I mean, startups now are, are a fact of life. They're so common now. I don't know too many students that that won't be part of a story. I just, I, I can't think of too many that, that would be. You know, I mean, it, it's, or that wouldn't be. It just doesn't, it doesn't register with me. Now, it's like,